Hi crafty friends, welcome back to Crafting with the Gringas. Today we're going to learn how to make the mini granny square as well as part one of our granny square book cover. Let's get started. We're going to get our the color that we want for the middle of our granny square. It's our first color. I'm going to make a slip knot which I do making an X on my finger, making a little loop with an X. Then you pull your tail up from behind through that loop and that makes, and you pull, pull it tightly and that makes a slip knot. And insert your hook and pull it. We chain three and the first st stitch that we made, that first chain, we're gonna go back, we're gonna take our fingers and kind of try to wedge our finger in there as much as we can, just a little bit of our finger. Once we have our space, we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna pull this loop through that loop and that creates a slip stitch. Then we're gonna chain three. This is going to count as our first double crochet and then we're going to do 11 more. A double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, let's make another one, insert your hook, and yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do 11 of these and plus our chain 11 plus our chain 3 is going to be 12 in total. Okay, once you've got your 11 on there, we're gonna find this chain three that we made at the first, and that we're not gonna go into the first or the second, we're going to go into that third chain, grabbing two of the strands. We're gonna yarn over it and pull up a loop. And then we're gonna do another slip stitch. So we're gonna pull this loop through this loop and slip stitch. At this time we can pull our tail tight and chain one. And cut your yarn. And then we're gonna get our next color. make a slip knot I like to work over as much of my tail as I can so I'm gonna find got right here where I cut my work the next one over I'm gonna insert my hook into that Okay, insert your hook, place your slip knot onto your hook, and pull that through, chain three, I'm going to do two more double crochets. 
one, two, chain two, and into the same hole, we're going to put three more double crochets. Okay, now we're going to count one, two, three, and insert our hook into in between the third and the fourth double crochet. So yarn over one, two, three, and insert your hook into that after that third double crochet. Let's double crochet. We're going to make three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. <coughs> okay, so you can see that the three double crochets, the chain two, that makes it turn, and then another three double crochets. We're going to yarn over and find one, two, three, and insert our hook between that third and fourth stitch and double crochet. Two more double crochets. chain two and then three more double crochets in into that same hole okay now we're on our last turn the corner so we should have six double crochets one two three four five six so we're gonna go in between so three on this side and three on that side, yarn over, insert your hook between the third and the fourth, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're going to continue, we're going to do two more double crochets. Chain two. And three double crochets. Okay, and now we're gonna see find where we did the our chain three, and on that third chain, we're gonna do a slip stitch in two. Pull it tight, and then we can fasten that off. You want to weave in this end. You're going to want to go back and forth a little bit. So Just keep, you know, put your needle through that side, and then you can go back. Leave leave one little part of that strand, and then go back. That should be good. These ones also, you're gonna want to weave in just a little bit.
to weave it in beforehand just a little bit. That way it's a little bit easier to work with when we, we get to the next step. We can just cut off our tails. And we've got our mini granny square. Now, what you're gonna need to do is see, for, for the next part, you're gonna wanna make enough granny squares that you can cover whatever book that you're planning to cover. Okay, so in my case, I've got a little Bible that I did three across and four down. For the binding I did four and then another four down and three across on the back. So basically you just want to lay out your book and measure. You can measure onto a piece of paper or, or you can just go placing the granny squares on the top to see how many you need and how many you'll need for the side. I laid them out and I plate, pinned them together with some stitch markers. I went sewing like this. Okay, and then like this. And right now I've got my last little part to sew together. I'm not really doing anything traditional, it's just what, how I felt like <laughs> stitching my granny squares together. There's a lot of fun, nice ways to do this. If you prefer a different method, I'm just grabbing both and doing, going, stitching back and forth. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go going back and forth. Through the stitches. Lining those stitches up. Here at the corners, I'm giving it a little bit of an, a little extra love, <laughs> so to speak, just to make sure. So I kind of cr cross it that way. And then kind of cross it back the other way. And just keep stitching back and forth. Make sure you don't have to pull it too tight, but you do want to make sure that it's tight enough that it's not going to be loose. Okay, now I'm gonna add my last, I'm gonna add my last granny square. So I'm gonna kind of place it in position. I'm gonna go through the chain stitch and through this chain stitch. And tighten, and then I'm gonna go through the other chain stitch and then the chain stitch on this row. And then from this side, I'm going to also go reinforce this joint. Okay, and I'm just going to go back 
where we joined originally. And this time I'm going to go up over and then down under. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of stability and then I'm going to continue. To sew this back and forth. Okay, and then this this one you're also gonna wanna go through both spaces and then kind of reinforce it and go back through. couple times, okay. And what I've been doing is I just insert my needle back to that little joint. Pass it over and then continue like put place those this side together. So I'm going to go in this side. And just keep going back and forth. We can bring it to the back. We're going to want to weave in our tail. Make sure it's good and secure. We don't want that coming undone. mine like that for now but okay now I'm gonna do a little border just to even up my edges a little bit make it a little bit nicer really join anywhere probably insert your hook and then you're gonna pull your yarn through and chain one and then we're gonna I'm gonna single crochet all along the border a few of the stitches are going to be hard to get into just just carefully go working up those stitches just keep single crocheting into each stitch And if you find that once you've get you've gotten your granny squares sewn together, because if you do use this method, I like how it looks because it gives it a little extra pop. But if you use this method, you do lo you lose a slight amount of the size of your granny square. So keep that in mind. If you need to, you could add an extra row of single crochets or t even two just to give it the size it needs if it doesn't quite fit on your book once you've got it sewn together I 
I'm here at my corner and I'm going to do five single crochets into every corner. Two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to single crochet into every single crochet and then every chain two corner we're going to put five single crochets into and I will meet you back when we're at the end. Okay, so I'm back. I've gone all the way around my project. Now what we're going to do, so this is our slip stitch that we used to slip into the project. So on the next stitch we're going to go into that and we're going to do a slip stitch. We're going to take our needle We're not going to go into the next one, but in the next one over we're going to go straight through with our needle and have we have both strands on our hook. Okay, I'm going to kind of make a little circle. Okay, and then, then our, in the loop that we, our last loop that we had on our hook, we're going to pull this through. Tighten it a little bit. I'm going to move it around a little bit so it looks nice. And we can weave in our ends. So I want you to get your ends woven in and everything. And I will see you in the next video for part two. Bye.